It's Wednesday, March 4th here at the West End Gun Club. Took the day off from work. Came out to the range. It's just after six and there's actually some folks using the, I don't know if you can see behind me, but they're on the long range pad, so they're shooting over all the base. So I'm waiting for them to get done. They should. They said they'll be done shortly, but the uh, guy cleaning up the porta potties is forward of the line, so they're waiting on him to get done. So once he's done, they're gonna fire off maybe 10 to 20 more rounds, and then um, they're gonna clear out and I can go use the Fire Bay. But while they're doing that, I'm just doing a survey of the Conus container to see what materials we need or what props we need for this month, March, uh, March's NRL 22 course of fire, because that match requires a tire I think that's the one thing that I don't we don't have, so I'm gonna have to acquire one for the next match. The guys who were shooting earlier on the uh, long range pad are done. It's 7:40. Been sitting around for like an hour, pretty much not doing much. Connor's container, just looking through my notebook and whatever, just watching these guys shoot. Um, didn't mind. It's no big deal. I mean, that's that's the way the club works. I mean, they're entitled to shooting on the on the long range pad if they want to early in the morning because that's just the rules and you just have to account for that when you come out here. I could have set up a target but I was just too lazy to set up a, a target at 200 or 300 and shoot rim fire. Um, I already shot it at Palmdale so I know where my gun's shooting and I didn't want to take the time because they told me they were going to be done relatively quickly. I think what took the most time was the fact that the guy who cleans up the porta potties, the, the truck that comes in and and uh, you know flushes all that out, yeah, he was taking a while. so. I mean, you gotta let him work out forward of the line so he can clean all that stuff up and then um, let him finish his business. Um, anyway, I wasn't really planning on doing much today as far as shooting, to be honest. Um, I wasn't gonna cut a range vlog. I'm actually here to record some other footage and take some other photos, but I'm gonna shoot some while I'm out here, obviously, since I came out to the range. But I'm gonna set up a couple target or props and targets. I'm not gonna run through the NRL 22 course of fire today. I'm gonna do that this weekend. I'm gonna come out probably Saturday or Sunday. And I'm gonna run through the March course of fire and get everything set up so I know how we can set up the targets and the props for the match and all the different stages for each, uh, for the match. I kind of have an idea um, going through my head and going off the course of fire when I was at home and just looking at the, the COF. And so I think I know where to lay everything out, but obviously it's all, it's all gonna depend on actual live fire. So I'll run through that probably this weekend. Anyway, I'm gonna go ahead and get set up and then uh, take care of business and get out of here because I do have to be out of here before 12 because I have an appointment at 1400 uh, uh, to get something done. So yeah, let's get set up. Spent the better part of an hour or so recording some other video and taking some other photographs that I needed to take care of while I was out here. But I have some targets set up because I wanted to run at least one of the stages of fire in the March course of fire, um, even though I'm not gonna dry run the entire match today. Um, but that one is Kernitz Positional Dilemma. Kernitz Positional Dilemma. It's, in it's an interesting stage of fire because it's no bag, no bipod, it's sling only. So you have three banks of targets, or three sets of targets. Two inch at 35, three inch at 65, two and a half inch at 100. St uh, standing rifle in hand, mag in, action open, on signal to start, shooter will st uh, engage from standing position, 35 yard, two inch. The shooter will, uh, three shots, then the shooter will transition to kneeling on the 65 yard, three inch with four shots. Then the shooter will go to prone and shoot on the 100 yard, two and a half inch with three shots. So it's actually gonna be interesting. A two inch target standing, isn't easy and I think under time a lot of people are going to time out to be honest um well they're going to rush through it and miss but I think some people who are actually going to take the time to shoot might actually time out but let's uh let's try this stage of fire I'm just trying to get my parallax here so, top of the minute I'm getting on target And I missed. Okay, then we're getting to kneeling. 
And I don't know if I'm gonna take the time to get in the sling for kneeling, to be honest. Key thing is parallax. Then you're getting too prone. Then I'll probably use the sling for this. I'm gonna take a look at my watch. Got 40 seconds right now. Missed three, and I just finished under time. Yeah, it's gonna be a tough stage, actually. Tough stage of fire to shoot. So it appears I can just keep my sling on, so that saves me about five or six seconds. So I'll leave my sling on. I'm not gonna use my sling for standing, to be honest. I hate the way you tension your, your arm when you're standing. I'd rather just shoot standing without the sling, like sling tension, so. Um, and this is all twisted around. All right, I'm gonna I'm gonna run it again. <clears throat> okay, get on target. I don't like the way I hold this gun with standing position. It's not like a service rifle. Taking too long to shoot my standing shots. Three hits. Let me transition to kneeling. Then I'm gonna adjust to 1.4.5. Parallax is the key. Miss. One down, or what missed one. <clears throat> I need more mag, to be honest, but... Three misses, still under time, apparently. Hasn't beeped yet, there it goes. Yeah, it's a tough stage, tough stage. Gotta run it. I'm gonna run it again. I didn't use a bipod during that run, I just had it down because I was using it to rest the gun, but let me go ahead and just move this up just for the sake of, uh, for the demonstration here. All right, try this one more time. Whew.
shoot, missed it. So get this timer out of my back pocket here. All right, kneeling. Then we're gonna have to adjust, plus parallax. Find the target. Missed two, so three total misses. Come down to 1.8. Parallax to 100, roughly. Need more magnification. Then you lose your target. Yeah, I lost time. Missed. Hit. So missed five. Wow, that was really worse than the previous ones. Really a lot worse than the previous ones. So five misses. Whew, that stage of fire is gonna be interesting for a lot of people. There's one other stage of fire that I wanted to run through real quick while I was out here. It was the paper stage called the support side of conundrum. It's a straightforward stage. You're basically going to shoot on the NRL 22 1.5 inch paper targets. So there's five bullseyes for those uh, for each shooter. And basically you're going to start standing, port arms, mag in, drop down to position from, to support it prone. You're going to shoot on each of the five bullseyes. Uh, with two shots, one from support side, one from strong side. So you're going to get down, support side, strong side, then shoot to the second bullseye, support side, strong side, third bullseye, support side, strong side, and repeat until you shoot all 10 rounds on five targets. So five pairs of shots. Seems pretty self-explanatory. Um, depending on their eye is, again, some people may struggle with this because you're going to be shooting on a paper target with rings and you want the best score. And if you don't know how to if your eye is significantly different in terms of the diopter necessary for your scope adjustments, then this could be a problem for you. But I recommend that people practice shooting their, their rifle with their non-dominant eye just so they can get an idea how it feels. Because it, if you don't take the time to try it out, it feels very awkward. And if, you, if it's the first time doing it and you come out to a match and you're shooting at a time, it just feels a lot very uncomfortable and you're gonna feel like you're struggling. So get behind your gun on occasion uh, so I'm a right-handed shooter. You should try shooting with your left hand. I'm, you hardly ever need to in real life, but just become familiar with it just so it doesn't feel um, awkward to you when you're actually being asked to do it as part of a stage of fire in a match. So, Anyway, I don't have paper targets set up because I didn't bring any with me, but I'm gonna, I put a one-inch steel target out there just to simulate 
a the one and a half inch bullseye target. So I'm gonna go ahead and start mag in. I'm not, I'm not gonna run the timer, but um, I'm gonna assume that I can finish this in less than two minutes. Start signal is given, drop in position. I'm gonna locate the target, which I should have done earlier. And I have it in, then we're gonna go ahead and chamber and you have to shoot obviously with your left hand if you're a right-handed shooter. So I'm gonna take the time to frame these shots as if I were shooting on paper. Somehow I missed that shot. I don't know how I missed that shot. It seems like a group. Huh, interesting. Uh, did something shift here? Okay. I am shooting my uh, long range, SK long range match, so I'm probably shooting hotter. So I'm gonna shoot lower. So pretty straightforward stage. Gonna frame this shot. That should be it. And well under time. So pretty straightforward. Again, if you've never shot left-handed and you're a right-handed shooter and you never shot right-handed and you're a left-handed shooter, get the top, get behind your gun and, and and try it until you're not it's not all awkward to you when you're trying to do it during a match. Um, Definitely on how your cheek well feels and all that, all that, uh, I guess all the nuances behind that. And adjust your diopter if you need to. Maybe so I have an index mark for my diopter for my right eye, and I know that for my left eye, I need to come slightly clockwise on the diopter. But in this scenario, I didn't bother to adjust it. My left eye seemed to adjust pretty well today in the bright sunlight conditions. So, um, <clears throat> yeah. So I think the one thing I'm getting from this, though, is um, Aaron. The PBR director, who's uh, this NRL 22 at Weston Gun Club, is shot in under the PBR, the Precision Bolt Rifle Discipline. And um, so Aaron kind of advises on the NRL 22 matches and helps, uh, helps me out uh, learning how to get all the logistics completed for these, for these NRL 22 matches at the club. But he had one recommendation that was to, on paper targets, try to run two shooters at once. And so I think we'll do that. We have plenty of room. We'll run two, two mats next to each other and we'll just run two shooters in tandem because we don't have to spot, really spot hits. Granted, we should be keeping an eye on the target to see if they're shooting out of order, but we've been giving shooters the benefit of the doubt on that, but I think we might have to keep an eye on that at the very least. But we can run two shooters at once, just run the timer and the clock for both, and it should be pretty easy, um, or pretty good, efficient to do it that way. So we'll go ahead and do that for the next match. I'm all packed up, about to get out of the range. Just need to drag the tank trap and the connex, or sorry, the tank trap and the 55 gallon drub back to the connex container. It's a really nice day today, and I wish I didn't have errands to run this afternoon, but um, would be nice to stick around to shoot a little bit more. But I don't have a tire, a vehicle tire, for one of the stages of fire for the March uh, course of fire, so we're gonna have to go dig one of those up. Um, I'm gonna dig one up before the weekend because I want to dry run the entire course of fire and set everything up how I want to set it up for the actual match day. Um, so I'm gonna hit up. I'm gonna probably hit up a tire shop near my place and see if they have any that they're throwing out. I prefer to be something a little bit bigger, like a 35 inch, 33 inch tire, something kind of large, um, just so that it's uh, got a bigger hole to shoot through. Well, I granted you can get like a 15 inch uh, tire for a 15 inch wheel or 17 inch wheel, whatever. Um, but I'm gonna find an old tire and then uh, I'll bring that in on the weekend for the uh, so I can dry run the entire course of fire this weekend. Oh, well, that's kind of it. I need to get out of here uh, so I can run those errands I need to run this afternoon. So, yeah, that's it for today. Today is March 4th, March 4th, here at the West End Gun Club. Um, thanks for watching the vlog, and I'll see you hopefully this weekend.